Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. And for this episode, uh, I am talking about just some recent pickups. Actually, some pickups that I've had in my stacks for a little while that I haven't talked about on the show yet. But I'll start with some 4K goodness. We have the 4K UHD release of David Cronenberg's film Videodrome from, uh, I want to say 1983. Um, yep. And this comes in the really wonderful Aero patented uh, hard case, which I love these sturdy hard cases. They're really nice. Um, and uh, it comes with a book, not a booklet, but a full-on book with essays and, and such. And... Um, Long Live the New Flesh. Really great little book. I love these. These are beautiful. Poster. And, of course, the 4K. Now, this is just the 4K and no Blu-ray. Also, some um, lobby card stuff. And the 4K, of course, itself is region-free. But this is an import I had to get through... I might have got this on eBay, but I, you know, you can get these through Diabolic DVD or Orbit DVD... Um, and sometimes on Amazon itself. A very bizarre film about a guy who runs a TV station, a rather sleazy gentleman played by James Woods, who encounters this bizarre show of torture, sexuality, and wants to air it on his channel, but sort of becomes obsessed with it, and it is this surreal thing that uh, kind of infect, not infects you, but like really becomes a bit nightmarish. Let's put it like that. Um, uh, combining the bio horror elements of his early films with the, whilst anticipating the technological themes of his later work, Videodrome exemplifies David Cronenberg's extraordinary talent for making both visceral and cerebral cinema. Uh, Max Wren, great name by the way, James Woods, is looking for fresh new content for his TV channel when he happens across some illegal s and style broadcast called Videodrome, um, embroiling his girlfriend Nick, played by Deborah Harry of Blondie, she's great in this, in his search for the source, uh, his journey begins to blur the lines between reality and fantasy as he works his way through sadomasochistic games, shady organizations, and body transformations uh, stunningly realized by Oscar-winning makeup effect artist Rick Baker. Yeah, there's some great stuff in this, including some torso-related reaching hands in kind of stuff that I won't go specifically into, um, but will be unforgettable. So this is a brand new 4K restoration of, from the original camera negative by Arrow Films of both the full director's cut and the U.S. theatrical cut approved by director David Cronenberg. Uh, to my eyes and from what I've heard from others, this is a real big, um, nice-looking transfer and a nice step up from the previous Blu-rays and worth grabbing for that alone. Now, of course, we have audio commentary here by Tim Lucas, which is very cool. Uh, he was the on-set correspondent for Cinefantastic magazine, uh, and the author of Videodrome studies in the horror film. Uh, David Cronenberg and Cinema of the Extreme. Uh, sorry, David Cronenberg and the Cinema of the Extreme, a documentary featuring interviews with Cronenberg, George A. Romero, and Alex Cox on uh, Cronenberg's cinema, censorship, and horror, the horror genre. Uh, Forging the New Flesh, a documentary by filmmaker Michael Lenick on Videodrome's video and prosthetic makeup effects. Fear on Film, a roundtable discussion from 1982 with Cronenberg, John Carpenter, and John Landis, and Mick Garris. That's, I think that's available on YouTube, but it's nice to have it in a better quality here. Uh, great conversation with three filmmakers, or four filmmakers that I uh, enjoy and who were really coming up at that time. Uh, the complete uncensored Samurai Dreams footage with commentary by Michael Linick, Helmet Cam Test, and why Betamax, two featurettes by Michael Lennick on the film's effects, the making of David Cronenberg's Videodrome in 1982 feature by Mick Garris, 
uh, with behind the scenes footage and interviews with Cronenberg, James Woods, uh, Deborah Harry, and Rick Baker. Video Oblivion, an interview with uh, cinematographer Mark Irwin, Pierre uh, David on Videodrome, an interview with executive producer Pierre David, aka Jack Martin, an interview with. Um, uh, let's see here. Boy, there's just so much on here. Um, AKA Jack Martin interview with Dennis Etchison, author of novelizations, uh, Videodrome in the fog, discussing Videodrome and his observations of Cronenberg's script camera, uh, Cronenberg's short film on starring Videodrome's Leslie, Les Carlson, pirated signals, the lost broadcast, deleted and alternate scenes from the TV version Original trailers, etc. 60 page collector's booklet. It's not a booklet, it's a book featuring writing on the film by Justin Humphreys, Brad Stevens, and Tim Lucas. Extracts from Cronenberg on Cronenberg and brand new roundtable retrospective with critics Alexander Heller Nicholas, uh, Cerise uh, Howard, Josh Nelson, and Emma Westwood. Fold out double sided poster. I mean, this thing is just crazy. This is why Arrow continues to be. One of my favorite labels to collect. They just put together a package that's like, wow, there's so much here. Um, yeah, I, I really love this disc. Uh, from what I've just barely scratched the surface of it, but a really nice release of Video Drum from Arrow. Moving on to another Arrow release. This is one I've had for a minute. Uh, I talked about Terry Gilliam recently and Adventures of Baron Munchausen on Criterion Blu-ray. Uh, this is 12 Monkeys from, I want to say, 1995. Um, another really epic production, like Munchausen, um, and is among you know my favorite Terry Gilliam films, and I, I like a lot of his films quite a bit. Uh, this one is the 4K version, which actually had a replacement disc, which I've, I've gotten and everything. Uh, the future is history. Following the commercial and critical success of The Fisher King, Terry Gilliam's next feature would turn to science fiction and a screenplay by Janet and David Peoples, who wrote Blade Runner, The Unforgiven, inspired by Chris Marker's classic film La Jetée. In 1996, a deadly virus is unleashed by a group calling themselves the Army of the Twelve Monkeys, destroying much of the world's population and forcing survivors underground. In 2035, prisoner James Cole, Bruce Willis, is chosen to go back in time and help the scientists search for the cure. Uh, featuring Oscar-nominated turn by Brad Pitt as a mental patient, Jeffrey Goins, uh, 12 Monkeys would become Gilliam's most successful film and is now widely regarded as a sci-fi classic. Arrow Films are proud to present the film in stunning new rest restoration. This is a brand new 4K restoration from the original Negative by Arrow Films, approved by t director Terry Gilliam. And then this ports over some older features, but they're all great. Um, you have audio commentary by Terry Gilliam and producer Charles Roven, The Hamster Factor, and other tales of 12 Monkeys. This is a feature length making of documentary by Keith Fulton and Louis Pepe, uh, Lost in La Mancha. That's a great documentary. Also goes into tons of stuff about the production. I just really enjoy watching the stories about the chaotic productions that end up being Terry Gilliam films. Um, the film exchange with Terry Gilliam, a 1996 interview with Gilliam and critic Jonathan Romney recorded at the London film festival appreciation by Ian Christie. Um, let's see here. Uh, author of Gilliam on Gilliam the 12 Monkeys Archives, and Theatrical Trailer Reversible Sleeve, etc. So, that is really nice. Uh, obviously, there's a booklet in here with essays as well. Also looks great. Yeah, just a movie that I saw. I remember I wasn't going to movies by myself a lot at the time in 1994 or 5, whenever this came out. But I was so excited because I was such a big fan of Terry Gilliam. I had seen The Fisher King and really enjoyed it. God, where's the 4K of that? I hope we get that. Um, and so I decided this came out and I was like, I got to go. I, I couldn't find anybody to go with. I'm like, I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to go see 12 Monkeys by myself. And it was a great experience. It was weird to go and not be able to talk to somebody about it. I really literally hadn't gone 
to a movie by myself at that time, maybe ever. Like I just, it was not a thing like movie going was always communal. It was, you'd find a friend to go with, you'd go with the family, whatever, uh, in terms of going to the theater. But I do remember being like, that was interesting going by myself. I love that movie. I'm glad I went. Maybe I'll go by myself some more. And I, you know, I still try to go with people when I can, but I do remember it being a, an interesting solitary experience going to see 12 Monkeys. Um, okay, so that's that one. Uh, this is one I wanted to talk about a while ago. This is The Bat, special edition from uh, the good folks at The Film Detective. This is a Vincent Price movie. Really nice looking um, transfer that they have here. It doesn't mention a restoration, but this is a movie that... Uh, I know I had seen in lots of sort of um, public domain type displays and the transfer here looks really nice. And I've been really digging the restorations and stuff that Film Detective has been putting out. And again, although it's not mentioned here, this one looks really good. Um, a downtrodden country estate becomes the site of a horrific murder. The predator has steel claws and rips his victims to shreds. But who is he? Vincent Price. Uh, stars in this thriller about a dilapidated estate that becomes the site of a grisly murder. Prolific writer slash director Crane Wilbur, he walked by night and Crime Wave, uh, helms this feature with a cast that includes Agnes Moorhead, Gavin Gordon, and in her last film role, Darla Hood of the R Gang comedies. This gallery of weirdos is guaranteed to give you the creeps, which, is, which of them is the mysterious killer known as the Bat. You'll find out soon enough but beware the scream you hear may be your own um so yeah i always dig vincent price from this period this is a nice black and white um movie and price is good in it and i don't want to give away too much it's a mystery film so it's one of those that i feel like it's best going in not knowing that much about it um okay so this has as do all uh film detective releases some nice features we have a feature length commentary and companion essay that's included inside here in this booklet um by jason uh a nye film scholar and professor um the the essay is called the case of the forgotten author um and that's that's very cool he's he's a good commentator one that i've um, noticed on some film detective releases and some others he always does a solid job and I enjoy his tracks they are a combination of observational as well as some actual comments on the film and some jokes uh, but he's not too heavy on that stuff and so it's it's enjoyable um, this is from 1959 by the way this film uh, the case for Wilbur for Crane Wilbur a featurette from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures on the director and screenwriter of The Bat as well as nine exclusive archival radio rebroadcast episodes featuring actor Vincent Price, which is another really cool extra feature to include in this. But um, if you're looking for enjoyable Vincent Price, black and white goodness, uh, the Bat special edition from um, the fine folks at Film Detective is worth your time. Um, then I've just got some pickups here, some random stuff that I've grabbed uh, in the last several weeks, uh, here is Scary Tales. This is a, an older release from Agfa and Bleeding Skull. And, um, it is, um, I've heard it called like the sort of low budget horror, uh, creep show type deal, basically. Um, and it's directed by Doug Ulrich from 1993. Uh, Scary Tales proves that the films of John Waters and Don Dohler aren't the only genre miracles from Baltimore. A shot on video horror anthology that plays out like a public access version of Creepshow. This is what happens when satanic necklaces, bloodthirsty slashers, and the Dungeons and Dragons styled live action role playing collide with a cool, uh, with cool... Dads, neon light bulbs, and dungeons synthesizers. Agfa and Bleeding Skull are thrilled to present the charming and gore-filled dreamscape that has been meticulously pieced together from its original SVHS master tapes. Um, yeah, I just heard this talked about on an old episode of 
the Unsung Horse podcast with Lance and Erica. They were interviewing uh, the great um, Zach Carlson. And they were going through the 90s uh, Bleeding Skull book which is a great, they did an 80s one and now a 90s one. This is, again, this is a couple years ago. And they were giving their picks, and I think this was maybe one of Lance's picks, but it was a movie I was like, oh, I don't have that Blu-ray. I need to get that Blu-ray. Um, as with all Ag for releases, it includes some nice stuff here. Commentary track with director Doug Ulrich, 1987 demo version of Scary Tales, as well as outtakes from the vintage and vintage TV promo appearances. Uh, early horror shorts by director Doug Ulrich, and bonus movie, Darkest Soul, 1994, the follow-up to Scary Tales. So tons of extra stuff, and I love that they usually do them in the form of shorts and extra features. So very much looking forward to checking out Scary Tales. It was just one of the AGFA releases I had missed when it came out. Um, next up we have... Uh, this is from... Uh, Classic Flicks. And I'm very excited to check this one out. I'd heard it on some list of favorites of the year last year. It is Mickey Spillane's I, the Jury. This is a special limited edition. Uh, it's a 3D Blu-ray and 4K, uh, as I understand it. And, um, yeah, this is fascinating to me, the idea of the kind of films they would put in 3D in 1953. And this one um, it says... Uh, Mickey Splane's two-fisted private detective Mike Hammer makes his film debut in I, the Jury, now available in stunning 4K UHD, Blu-ray, and 3D uh, in this special limited edition from Classic Flicks. After his best friend and war buddy is mysteriously gunned down, Mike Hammer, Biff Elliott, will stop at nothing to settle the score for the man who sacrificed a limb to save his own life during combat. Along the way, Hammer rides a fine line between gumshoe and and one man jury staying two steps ahead of the law and trying not to get bumped off in the process. At the time, I, the jury was adapted from for the silver screen in 1953. Mickey Spillane was the best-selling mystery writer in the world, capitalizing on Spillane's acclaim. Producer Victor Saville, Saville um, bought the rights to Jury and tapped screenwriter Harry Essex, who had done Kansas City Confidential, to both write and direct. And Seville also secured the services of cinematographer John Alton. Of course, shot Raw Deal and T-Men for Anthony Mann, a great cinematographer, black and white. Uh, the master of light and shadows to lens this iconic film noir and famed composer Franz Waxman, Waxman, Sunset Boulevard, A Place in the Sun, to produce the score. So you got a lot of great people involved in this on the behind-the-camera side. Co-starring Preston Foster, Peggy Castle... Uh, jury also boasts solid support from Alan Reed, John Quaylen, Tom Powers, Margaret Sheridan, Mary Anderson, Francis Osborne, Nestor Pava, Joe Besser, and Alicia Cook Jr. About the restoration, I, the jury has been restored by the UCLA Film and Television Archive in collaboration with PKL Pictures and Romulus Films, Laboratory Services by Roundabout Entertainment, the UCA LA Digital Lab, Audio Mechanics, and Simon Daniel Sound. Um, very cool stuff. Special features include audio commentary by Mike Hammer, uh, continuation writer Max Allen Collins, Road to Perdition, co-author of Spillane, uh, King of Pulp Fiction, uh, with James L. Trailer. Archival commentary with Biff Elliott from 2004 with nephew Josh Shalick. Special thanks to Connie Elliott for that. Excerpts from the archival interview with Biff Elliott from 2006. Deep in the Shadows, the 3D world of I, the Jury. Uh, unaired Mike Hammer TV show pilot from 1954, written and produced by Blake Edwards, starring Brian Keith. Very cool. And two rarely seen O. Henry Playhouse TV episodes with Preston Foster and another uh, with Peggy Castle. And episodes of the TV series Public Defender featuring Biff Elliott. So this is a stacked um, special edition. It was a little pricey and I was like, why is it so expensive? Uh, obviously it's a 4k, it's a 3d Blu-ray and it's got lots and lots of stuff. So very excited to dig into this one. That's I, the jury from classic flicks. Uh, and then lastly, I think I'll talk about this DVD that I picked up of dream stalker, which is an intervision release, which is 
a sub label of um, Severin, if I recall. And uh, yeah, this one sounds nuts. This is another one that came up, I think, during that uh, Unsung Horrors episode. And um, it says <laughs> two of the most insane SOV shockers of the 90s on DVD for the first time ever. Uh, so you have Dreamstalker and Death by Love. Uh, Dreamstalker, it fits right in with Things and Sledgehammer. Actually, I happen to have my DVDs of Sledgehammer and Things right here. Those are two great Intervision DVD releases. Those are not on Blu-ray yet. I don't know that they will get Blu-rays. I would love to see them get Blu-rays. Those are both fascinating movies really fascinating um i'm not a big sov guy personally i do like the stuff that saturn score has been putting out but for the most part i'm not always drawn to it but those are two of my favorites sledgehammer and things so when you say that this is right in with those um uh dream is something special when Sacramento's supermodel is haunted by the supermolded corpse of her dead motocross racer boyfriend it will unleash an erratically um, it will unleash an erratically ambitious nightmare of cheap lightning, cheap lighting, bad sound, bizarre plotting, gratuitous nudity, and grisly effects that Bleeding Skull says is guaranteed to make you feel like you're trapped in a lo-fi psychedelic abyss of fun. Uh, yeah, I don't really need too much more on that. Uh, Death by Love, this is in this inexplicably obscure psycho thriller, a study, a stu, studly sculptor, producer, director, writer, star, and Texas building contractor Alan Grant fears that a devil worshiping childhood pal is murdering his every new girlfriend. Filmed in the suburbs of Dallas and packed with softcore sex, scattershot performances, thick regional accents, and a what the WTF plot twist. Uh, it may be the most astounding SOV horror vanity project you've ever seen. Yep, you got me there. Um, special features. Uh, remembering Ricky with actor Mark Davis. Dirt Bike Dreams with executive producer Tom Negro. Um, Alan Grant remembers Death by Love via video Skype. Yvonne, Eric, and Brad Bishop remember Death by Love via video Skype. So some interviews with players in those SOV films. This is going right in my uh, Intervision collection. And I don't think these will probably end up getting Blu-rays. I haven't seen... I mean, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak too soon. Like I said, I'd love to see Sledgehammer get one. I'd love to see Things get one. But the Intervision stuff, typically I haven't seen get the Blu-ray upgrades. So I guess we'll have to see. But anyway, that will do it for this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.